Schultz. His high school is a shame to him. He's done nothing with his degree. Um, this is a nightmare. Every time. Why do I do this every year? It is always a nightmare. It is, uh, it is always the scary clown nightmare. But then the clown's a little sexy. You're like, all right, I'll go and have that nightmare. I like that these guys uh, moved closer just to talk the entire time. That's great. Right. that you guys came closer and then just talked throughout everything. And, um, I, just think, yeah, right. I just think it's funnier than probably anything that I'm going to do. Just like, oh, Thank you. Okay. Um, guys, uh, I'm not good at improv. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not famous yet. Like, for, every, for everybody's sake right now, I thought, everyone I loved it, I was like, yeah, this is going to work. And it didn't. It did not work out. And here we are every year. And I feel like I owe it to you. I feel like you don't uh, if I was famous, I feel like I'd have more fun if I was a celebrity. I feel like this would be a lot easier. Once you're a celebrity, that would be great, because then you don't ever lose celebrity status. You can just post on that. Everything like that, once you're a celebrity, nothing you ever do makes you not be a celebrity. Any, any stupid thing, you, you can go on a racist rant. You might just become a bigger celebrity. That's great. You realize Mel Gibson probably has a ton of fans who don't even know he's an actor? That's great job security, that guy. Uh, Conquer, uh, Conquer's looking good. I haven't been back to Conquer in a while. I love that you guys are uh, revitalizing the neighborhood and adding a whole bunch of... Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I love when, I love that Con when places like Conquer say they're revitalizing the neighborhood, because like, it's like, oh, we're just like one whole foods away from being the other moon capital of the world. I love that. Uh, I love all the new stores that you don't need, but you still have for some reason. Uh, my new favorite store is the yo-yo store down the street. Uh, great place, that yo-yo store. You know what that means? The economy's fine, everybody, okay? Next time you hear somebody say Obama is killing the economy, just go, nope, yo-yo store, okay? You know what that means? That means the economy is so good right now, people can afford to have dreams again, all right? I, uh, I went into the yo-yo store because I needed to know. I needed to know what it was like inside. And uh, just in case you guys haven't been there, this is what the yo-yo store is. What it is, is it's a store filled with yo-yos. That might seem obvious, but I always feel like I need to explain that. Uh, because when you see a yo-yo store, part of your brain is still like, no way. No way is it just yo yo's I went inside of the yo-yo store, and it was just the owner of the yo-yo store in there alone, of course. And uh, he's just standing there by himself, doing a whole bunch of fancy yo-yo tricks. And when I walked in, he goes, hey man, let me know if you have any questions. And what I wanted to ask him was, uh, yeah. Why? But I thought that was kind of mean, so instead I asked a nicer question. I said, yeah, sure, which one is your favorite yo-yo? And in all seriousness, he goes, well, the one I'm using right now is probably my favorite yo-yo. Uh, you know, I tell you, the one I use the most is uh, probably the one on my waist here. And then he pulled off a yo-yo off of a belt here, like he's a surgeon on call. And that's all the yo-yo baby jokes you could possibly write. I tried. That's all there is. I love the yo-yo guy, though, because uh, in that moment, it was a beautiful moment. It was the first time in my life that I had ever felt like the alpha male was standing next to that guy. I, uh, I, I know that was the only time in my life I've ever had, like, I could have any woman in this room type of confidence, you know? Just, it's a shame that it was just me and the yo-yo guy alone in the yo-yo store, but... Actually, I thought about this. If a woman was to walk into the yo-yo store at that moment, she would immediately be the alpha male in that situation. I, I bought a yo-yo from him, though, because I knew I was going to write a joke about him, so I thought I should at least buy the yo-yo and support his business. And I looked for it. Uh, they, I was looking for the Dunkin' Butterfly yo-yo, my favorite yo-yo from when I was a kid. And I found it. I was like, yeah, Dunkin' Butterfly, how much is it? Five bucks? Totally worth it. I'll buy it. And he 
as you know, Duncan recently came out with the Duncan Butterfly XL. It's a butterfly yo-yo with a ball bearing inside. You can do a lot more tricks. It's only seven dollars. I was like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll do that. I bought a seven dollar yo-yo and I felt good about it until I got outside and I realized I just got upsold by the yo-yo guy. He was the alpha male the entire time, guys. And then normally that's where you would all pick me up, carry me one lap around to celebrate how great a local reference that was. Yeah, I saw that. I, uh, because I was driving around with a friend of mine, and uh, just so everybody in the back knows, this table's having a great time, and it's really carrying the rest of you right now. Cheers. All right, thank you. A bunch of guys who kind of look like me. Okay, that's uh, usually what happens. My demographic is a hall of mirrors. That's really where I do the best. Is uh, uh, let's see. I was driving around with a friend of mine, and we were listening to like local top 40 pop music. Which uh, we were listening to that new song. You know that new pop song. It um, uh, it sounds like um, uh, uh, every other pop song. And uh, we were listening to the pop song, and I'm not proud of this, but out loud. Several words. Man, whatever happened to rock and roll? You know this guy? Uh, so I'm a dad now, officially. Uh, I don't have kids. Turns out, turns out you don't need kids to be a dad. You just need to have the kind of personality that likes to unwind with a beer and some Steely Dan. That's all it takes. I, uh, I don't like. What's up? Dad bod. That's Dad bod? Now that's where you checked in? That's where. That's the line. That's the line where you were like, excuse me, dad bod. Okay. Thank you. Hey, thank you. I don't know if you were commanding or did you enjoy alright. If you loved the first half of that joke, you're gonna love when I actually make it through a joke. And um You're hooked? Alright, great. Tell your friends, alright? Look. <laughs> Uh, what's her name? What's her name? No, 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 don't look at her, don't look at her. She's what started this whole thing, okay? Alright? She was the one who was like, no. Friend or boyfriend, I don't know what the dynamic is here. Me and the two guys I'm dating who finally met, but I was like, you know what, guys, let's talk it through up at the front of the comedy show. And, um, what was I talking about? Dad bot, cool, yes, thank you. Alright, we'll handshake again. I can't tell if you know if my handshake or just... Uh, no, don't let go. Don't ever let go. All right, you can let go. Oh, no, I did that to myself. Okay, we made a mistake. Army of me, help. Okay. Uh, anyways, I don't like a lot of modern music. And he's gone already. I lost him. You break the handshake, you break the box. Uh, I, uh, I don't like a lot of modern pop music. I never have. I always loved classic rock. That was what I was brought up on. I always loved it. Like, I, anytime I hear a new song and people are like, oh, Beyonce, Adele, they're so great. They're not. No, no one is as cool as Mick Jagger, in my opinion, all right? Here's how cool Mick Jagger was. If you were born between the years 1964 and 1992, there is more than a 50% chance that Mick Jagger is your real father, okay? That's how cool that guy was. I always wanted to be a rock star, like Mick Jagger, when I was a kid. I would watch movies about rock stars, like, like Spinal Tap, Almost Famous. Uh, one of my favorite movies is the Oliver Stone movie about the doors. I love that movie. I love Jim Morrison when I was a kid. I used to watch that movie and be like, yeah, I want to be like Jim Morrison. I want to be a cool rock star, like all the rock stars in these movies I like. Uh, and then I grew up, and I did not turn out like the cool rock star in all those movies. Uh, I turned out like a much different character in all those movies. I turned out like the boring record executive in every rock star movie. Like, every rock star movie has that one scene where a guy who looks exactly like... Now, guys, now this is like the good stuff. Okay, well. Okay, so I'm going to Uh, okay. Okay, I'll see. Oh, hey, okay, now you don't sound like my dad. Uh, it's weird because my brother's here. Um, uh, let's see. What was I talking? Anyways, uh, there's always that boring, that boring record executive guy in every movie. Like, there's always that one scene in a rock star movie where a guy who looks exactly like me with these glasses and a suit just coming in being like, Hey, really grooving tracks in the studio in that game. Really, really far out, funky, far, funky, fresh, but he's just using slang and things to teenagers use outside, you know? I don't want to be that guy. I'm upset that I turned out like that guy, because those are the guys that ruined rock and roll. Those are the guys back in the 70s who were just like, all right, hey, band's meeting, everybody in. All right, Rolling Stones, I gotta talk to y'all. Well, if you're doing solo, you 
the show next to you, and Dad's got a problem with one of your lyrics. How do you feel about changing Let's Spend the Night Together to Let's Buy a Quality American Car, huh? Can you take that? All right. Really? Stop with the stuff. Right. You're my best friends. All right. Uh, I'm in a weird mood today. I don't know if you can tell that I'm in a weird mood. Uh, I found out recently that the girl I was in love with in high school got married recently. Uh, which is always, it's always a rough experience, but you know what's, it's better to have loved and lost than never have loved at all, right? It's a very famous expression, I don't know if you've heard it, I think it was originally said by a uh, liar. Um, I, uh, girl I was in love with in high school, just got married, and um, I was not invited to a wedding, uh, but thanks to Facebook, still got to go. Um, I was looking at all... That's my usual closer, but I just have to do something else. Uh, I was looking at all of the wedding photos on Facebook, and uh, I actually sent this out live while I was flipping through pictures. I was like, all right, let's check out the competition. And I don't know why I said that. Competition's over. You won. You won the whole thing. Uh, but one thing that I have to report is that her new husband doesn't look a thing like me. We all understand why that's great news, right? All this time, I thought she hated me because of my terrible personality. Turns out, she just thinks I'm ugly. That's fine. That's not you can, you can fix ugly. You know, personality, you can't fix that. That's branded into your soul, but ugly. You have any idea how easy it is to change how ugly you are? I just grew a beard. None of you know what my real face looks like, all right? That's how easy it is. That's how every, every summer, I always shave the beard. And this is how I know it's easy to change your appearance really easily. Like, every time I shave my beard, people will look at me like, wow, you look completely different. You look completely different with that beard. I always have to be like, no, calm down. It's from here to here is a little different. And then the rest of me is exactly the same. Because it'd be weird if I looked completely different without a beard. Like if as I was shaving, I was like, oh, Japanese under there. I have no idea. I mean, Japanese is a that's why you shouldn't judge people based on their appearance. I'm sorry to get so preachy so early into this. Uh, it feels like three hours set. Uh, I, uh, I, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you know, judge people based on how they look. I was out at a bar with a friend of mine, and uh, I was getting a drink, and this girl was at the bar, and I just happened to talk to her while I was getting a drink. She seemed really funny. She seemed, really, she seemed like the kind of girl that my friend would like. And so I told him, I was just like, hey, you gotta talk to this girl. She's really funny. I think you might like her. And he just looked at her and said, oh, the fat Russian girl? No thanks. <laughs> I was like, really, really, man? You're, you're, I'm totally, she's really funny, she's really nice, I think you might like her, you're, you're just gonna judge her based on her appearance? Like, she's, I really think you guys have hit it off. And plus, she's Russian. How do you know she's fat? Maybe she just has a series of smaller Russian girls stacked up inside of her. But now you'll never know because you didn't even want to say hi to her, right? That's why you don't judge people based on their appearance. You know, I got the middle over here. I like to do like a weather report midway through each joke just to let everybody else know what they're missing out on. You know, and he's like, grab some chains around your tires. I'm too loud. What's a comedy I was Oh my god. I'm proud of it. It took me about 15 minutes to look over here at Jake Rowe for, for any sort of indication that he's a week. Thanks, thanks. Oh, hey, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's see, after that one, I was, oh, I was down in, uh, I was down in D.C. Uh, a few weeks ago. I was down in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, if you believe the media. Uh, I was down in D.C., I went to the, there it is, I went to the, uh, the Jefferson Memorial, I went to the Jefferson Memorial, uh, I'd never been there before, and while I was there, there was this, uh, this park ranger who was just explaining stuff about Thomas Jefferson, all these sorts of facts, and at one point, an Iraqi couple came up to him, started asking questions about the Jefferson. Well, uh, I should mention, I know that they were Iraqi because they said, hi, we're visiting from Iraq. I wasn't just looking at it like, yeah, that's one of them. Like, nothing, nothing racist or nothing like that. They just opened with, hi, we're visiting from Iraq. We don't know anything about Thomas Jefferson. Who is this man who is clearly important and built a statue? Uh, and then the most amazing thing happened, where the park ranger just explained everything about Thomas Jefferson. And I realized something that day. I realized I've been an American my entire life. I don't think I could just explain Thomas Jefferson from scratch. Like, that. that's amazing what that guy did. I don't know anything about Thomas. I know the same things about Thomas Jefferson that everybody knows. I know that he wrote the Declaration of Independence and he was the third president of America. And I got 
gotta be honest, I'm only like 40% sure of that second one. I really don't have an idea. I was embarrassed. I was like, why don't I know more things about Thomas Jefferson? I went to school, I should know these things. And then I remembered, oh yeah, it's because after those two facts, it's just a long list of stuff we all try to forget about Thomas Jefferson. And he was not the greatest guy. I feel like that park ranger has one of the most awkward jobs you can have in America. Because eventually the tough questions about Jefferson are going to get asked, you know? Like if I was a park ranger at the Jefferson Memorial, I'd have to be like, All right, hey everybody, welcome to Jefferson Memorial. Uh, this is Thomas Jefferson. He wrote the Declaration of Independence. And uh, he was the third president of America. Maybe, not quite sure. Actually, to be honest, uh, anybody have any questions about that? Yeah, you were the except for the ones that he owned. I'm sorry, I wasn't there. I didn't get to cast a vote. I'm very, any other questions, please, anybody? Yeah, you. Uh, yeah, did Thomas Jefferson have any children? Okay, let's ask any questions about Jefferson's kids, all right? Does anybody have a question for about Lincoln? Maybe for the love of God, anybody? Abraham Lincoln, great American, uh, freed the slaves, terrific guy. When Lincoln freed the slaves, did he live out the rest of his life as an American hero? Oh, boy. Uh, uh, no, someone shot him in the head for that one. Did the rest of the nation mourn his loss? Half the country was kind of okay with it. This is a weird place that you've chosen to visit. I'm very sorry. Uh, that is the smartest joke I have. Uh, I like to do that one right before what might be the dumbest jokes I have. Uh, but, but you all came on that journey. That was fun. I was thinking about the first job I ever had. First job's always an important job, right? No matter